We say that. That's peace and that's I love you. Hi, Saturday. <laughs> What's that's up? Our screenshot right there. That's it. That's the one we're gonna use. Hey, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's it. Is that we're all here. we need to do is create a screenshot? We just, we just to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you see this is an R or does this look a backwards R? It's a backwards R. It's always backwards because of the camera. <laughs> oh, it's Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning. Are you guys doing all right? 2020, June 27th. So tomorrow is Addie's birthday. We're having so many birthdays. Good morning, Bubba. Yours. What's up, Bubba? I know. So many birthdays. So we're doing... We had mine, then we had his last weekend, and then uh, we're doing a birthday party for Addie today. Today so we're going to have a, it's a party. We got how many kids coming over? Ten, yeah. ten little girls coming over to the pool party and sleep over and sleep over. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Send help. Help. Send help. Send help. Send help. <laughs> Let me pull this in here a little bit. Yeah. See us a little bit better. Not it's so gonna, far away. It's going to be so fun, though. It is going to be fun. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. fun. And she's going to be eleven tomorrow. Addison like Doss what? turns 11. I wish she would come in here. She's just in the other room. So I wish she would come in here and say hi. No, she's so looking up uh, some sleep, games for sleep the over, party. I know, sleepover. Games. Ideas. and Ideas for them to play. But I still wish she would come in here and say hi. We got a swimming pool out back. And they'll probably spend the majority of their time in the fort that they're uh -huh. going to build with sheets and blankets and all that. And I think that's what she seems most excited about. So, oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so we're so, doing it. Hey, Erica, we're doing what's it. up? Got, Good morning. We, we got this going yeah. tonight. So we took her to dinner last, last night. Last really night. Cool. Yeah, cool. we took her out to a, a restaurant that she's been wanting to try for a while here in town, like yeah. right up Camelback Mountain, which, you know, the views down there are horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible. But yeah. it, was, it was so awesome. We just got to connect with Addie for a little while. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. So starting that birthday weekend off. Some great food and got to hang out with our amazing little daughter and show her our favorite restaurant. She'd never been there before, so we oh, yeah. we took her to um, that restaurant and had great food and showed her some awesome views and let her experience some of, it's called Paradise Valley, it's in yeah. Scottsdale, it's incredible. If you guys have never been to Scottsdale or to the area of Scottsdale, which is called Paradise Valley, it's, it's unbelievable and so we live about um, 20 minutes from there and love it. So yeah. that was fun. What you doing over here? I'm sharing our live right now. Oh, that's cool. So, excuse me. Excuse <laughs> me. So, <laughs> hey we guys, here's, here. yeah, we did. So here's what yes. we're going to talk about today. We're, I, I had this idea of why relationships fail. Well, can, well, first, can we talk about okay. like, kind of where we've been tracking this week? Yeah. yeah Is that sure. okay? I don't know where we've been. What do you mean where we've been where, tracking? Where we've been tracking like uh, this week, the, just the, the for us, like what okay. we have going on, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, the yeah. track that we've been down. Sure. This week. So I'll Well, I'll let me, let me that do that, and then you can tell them where we've been oh, tracking. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we decided we want to talk about today um, things. Hi, Crystal Joyce. Um, <laughs> we want to talk today about reasons relationships fail. And so I think a, this is going to be more personal relationship versus professional relationship talk. You know, I talk to teams all the time. That's the majority of what I spend my time doing is working with teams. But one of the things that I've always quoted and shared is that teams are made up of individuals. And so if I can work with a team corporately and they can take the practices that I've shared with them, anything that they learn and turn that into something at home to help them do better with their relationship with their spouse, significant other, with their children, with their parents, with just the relationship they have with themselves, then that's a win for me. And so I don't try to, when I'm coaching a team, I'm not trying to uh, get them to logistically do certain things on the job. That is that is the job of the corporate team lead, manager, performance, performance all that stuff. They know what they need to do with their job. Um, that's not the approach that I go. When I work with a team, I'm going at them as individuals to help them be better at what they do so then they take the team up. Teams are made up of individuals and so the conversation today is more about personal relationships and marriage, um, intimate relationships, um, just some of the things that I've seen over the years that can cause people to fail uh, in, a, in marriage, in a relationship, um, but also not necessarily fail in the way that a lot of people think of failure. Failure for many people is like, oh, we're just, we're no longer together. Um, failure is when you're together, but yet you're physically together, but not a lot's happening. And not you become, alignment. 
there's no alignment, there's yeah. no congruency. Um, you're not, you're just roommates. You're not necessarily, you know, um, connected. And so, and, and relationships will fail. I mean, that's, you know, it's 50% divorce rate in our country, more than that. I was gonna say and, maybe more. Which is sad, you know, it, it means that we don't, it, what that means is that we don't have the skills or we don't have the mindset or the accountability or the support yeah. to make sure that we are navigating the most difficult parts of relationship. And when relationships do start to fall apart, um, it, it winds up hurting a lot of people. It hurts the individuals in the relationship, it can hurt friends, it can hurt the rest of the family. Um, because you know, when you see somebody going through a bad relationship, um, when they're struggling in relationship, that's a lot of pain that money can't fix. Money cannot fix broken relationships. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. I mean, going to dinner last night where we went, it's not cheap in, in the experiences that we create. It's not cheap. You have to have money. I mean, a friend of mine used to say, well, what good is life if you can't afford it? But what good is it to be able to afford it, but not be able to have the experiences within that and the overall, I think, life experience of yeah. enjoying the relationship and getting the most out of it. The richness and the intentionality of building a relationship and yeah. being healthy. Yeah, wealth yeah. and richness are not, are not the same. And we've, right. we've been talking about this recently. We want to have a relationship that is, is rich. We want it rich in experiences. We want it rich in mm -hmm. communication to make the experiences better. We want a lot of different things. And so wealth and, and rich are not the same in relationship. And so um, I just wanted to talk today a little bit about some of the things that I've seen that can cause failure and, and just kind of touch on them. And hopefully if you can pull one or two of these things from the list that we'll share with you today um, and then ask yourself some, some tough questions and then be willing to look at how you can create or assimilate some of these ideas into your relationships. I think that relationships can, I know, I'm not gonna say I think, I know your relationships can be better, they can be richer, but also the quality of your life, I believe has a lot to do with the quality of your relationships. And if you don't have good relationships and you're afraid of relationships, if you're afraid of being vulnerable, you're afraid of being hurt, you're afraid of whatever, your relationships are going to suffer. And when you suffer in relationships, your life suffers. And because you need relationships. Mm -hmm. I've never met anybody that could be and do life completely on their own that so, felt really good and felt really, pa I mean, there's a season. It's a vital source. It's a source, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a season you can go through where it's like, yeah, I did this all by myself and I just put my head down and I worked and I got through a rough season. Wonderful, that's awesome, you gotta do that. But there's also something to say about creating a balance in your life where you have a great connection with other human beings, you have a great connection with yourself, you have a great connection with your goals and what you wanna create. Um, I think those just fuel, they're the lifeblood, I think, of a great experience and a great relationship. So, yeah. um, the, anyway. The thing that, that we, because we're working on right now, a relationship series that will go up on his website. Um, Our website. Okay, well it's, RonnieDoss.com. So anyway, but, but if we, you look in the in the in the fine print, it says <laughs> Jennifer Doss's man. Yes. Okay. Got it. Yep. I don't think everybody needs to know that. Everybody this is does not, need to know, and I think they do. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they probably do. Like, no, she runs the show. Oh. You think she, who runs the show? No. I, I run the show. <laughs> You You're run so you run the show in such a, a neat different ways in a different way. What's up, different Rick? Ways. So um, so the thing about the relationship series is we want to base in our podcast we have we ha have a new relationship. It's all called Emerging Together. So his podcast is Emerge, and then ours is Emerging Together, and that's also going to be the title of the relationship series. But the whole premise of what we're doing is I feel like built on a lot of this foundation where you have said forever if you succeed in the marketplace but you fail at home you have failed so it goes hand in hand it doesn't make like you a failure saying, it's no. just a failure and yeah. so a lot of times it's being really aware that there's lifeblood that you have to fuel into your home life mm -hmm. um, because so many people I think now are I gotta accumulate one more dollar is gonna make everything better if I get one one more acquire one more thing that's gonna make everything all right um, and all that. And then what happens is the main things at home suffer. And many people, I coach a lot of people, are great at building the external and adding all the what are called accoutrements to their life. 
but the relationship at home is suffering. Mm -hmm. And that is something to where, in my coaching, but then just working with friends, just people closest to me, I wanna talk about how you're doing, how, how's your spouse? Is your spouse smiling? Are they happy? Are they enjoying life? Are you guys doing fun things together? Or is this just a, are you just kind of getting by thinking that if you add another thousand dollars, another ten thousand dollars, another hundred grand to your bank account, that you're slowly shuffling your way to your grave and you're getting closer to that just because of time, but you haven't filled the time that you've had with really great experiences. And great experiences do not have to be vacationing in the Gulf of Mexico. It doesn't mean that you gotta be in, in you know, Paris. It doesn't, that's not what we're talking about. Those things are wonderful, but I'm talking about really creating awesome experiences within the relationship. And so um, this is something that is, is near and dear to me, and that's, that's kind of the context for this. Yeah, story. and like when we were at the very beginning of this and I said, let's kind of go down the road that he and I have been tracking down this week, that is also I wanted to say I wanted to talk about that because this is the base the like the foundation of our our whole relationship series and everything that we're passionate about like what you're saying with people and succeeding at home but we had to have two full days not we let, let me say this oh. say, it's been a hell of a week okay <laughs> let me just say that it's been a hell of a week no kidding it's been a rough awesome horrible terrible wonderful powerful week let's just put that for us relationally and it's but, just been that so we had we not had that's not the right word we chose to take two full days out of this week to get really raw and authentic with each other about things that we had not in the past and it kind of just like stayed under the rug I guess is the best way to say like and not that it was driving a wedge in between us at all, but it's something just came up and it was like, okay, we really need to work through this. And we took two days turning ourselves inside out into the most raw, <laughs> vulnerable place that we had ever been. But we were like, this is our relationship. It has to be this. Like we give ourselves no other choice, but to go to those places so that we can always live from a healthy place as a and, couple. And, and so in the, this vulnerable and it was awful. spot, there was a week was where awful. there was a lot of crying. And there was. I mean, it was there were, awful. we cried. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing, it's, it's, but it was amazing. awful. You know, we, you've heard me say, us say, that many people, they're, they're seeking a treasure from a cave they're not willing to dive into. And we, we took it on. Man, and we dove so, into that cave and it was... Yeah, and so Horrible. we talked and we cleared things that we've been together for 16, yeah. over 16 years. Yeah. And when, when we got together, we were both relatively naive to relationships. I was, I was a little more mature in relationship than her. I was she, 19. She was 19 <laughs> and I was, I was what the heck do I know? And so, and, and, but I'd been, very, I'd been very persistent with career and making things happen I was pretty aggressive, as you guys <laughs> probably guessed, but um, pretty aggressive and going after that. And then she comes along and we meet and it's like, all right, game on. And we've been honest with each other all the way. Yeah. It's not that we're ever dishonest, just there were things that we hadn't discussed or chatted about and really gotten clear and gotten out of the way. And so we, this past weekend, we, we stayed for my birthday hotel uh, resort here in Scottsdale. We did a staycation, so much fun. It was incredible. And, but we spent one of the days there in this, this staycation, we spent one of the days talking, like really talking hours, and yeah. hours of asking each other questions and answering and then pushing each other to be honest about like, what do you feel? What, what, what's it like? What do you, what do you see? You know, and, and the conversation just kept, and because of a, a, a persistence, I was like, we're going to stay with these thoughts and we're going to keep taking the them. onion. Like we just kept going yeah. we just yeah. kept going with it and it gets it, it got very very uncomfortable and the, from that the conversation is like it's a mirror that gets stuck in front of your face it was for me for both of us both. I think and you see things that you hadn't seen before and so it's not that anything's hidden in the relationship it's not that anything's you're being dishonest it's just certain things have to move in a relationship mm -hmm. 
for newer mindsets and newer connections to really emerge. Yeah. And yeah, I hate to use that word, but that's kind of our, our coining phrase. Yeah. But you have to emerge at another level of connection. And so after that, the one day there. That was the catalyst that, that the started catalyst it. That was the catalyst that started a, it. That we had an amazing time like the rest of the weekend. But after we got back, we were like, okay. We, de we had we, to decompress. We had to really decompress and, and dig that's when the work really started. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't when we were talking to each other, asking questions, because that was kind of easy. But then when we got home, it was kind of like, hey, let's go back to that, and let's really uncover that part. Yeah. Because you, as we, there's something still out on yeah. that. You and said this. When we talked about it, you said this, and so elaborate on that, and we went back to it. And the debriefing of the weekend away and really having these conversations where we set aside specific time to talk and then it's like you we spent a couple of days after that going back and 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 i don't know rehashing it to make sure we were very clear on what was said and understanding um it moved some things out of the way yeah and our relationship moved forward and i feel like that right now we are healthier than we've ever been and we're it's 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 amazing and it's very exciting um but it took it took getting really, really uncomfortable. And if, if you want, if you feel like your relationship has been, um, ever gotten to a point where you're, it's, it's stagnant or you feel like, yeah, we're just, you kind of take each other for granted and it's kind of like a given. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've talked to one of the teams a couple of weeks ago, I was coaching and I said, when, you, when a person goes from being a gift, like she's a gift to me in my life, when a person goes from being a gift in your life to they're the given, that they're just going to be there. It's an obligation. They're, yeah, in yeah. a sense, it's an obligation to talk and connect or do the work. But when you when you go from the gift into a given, you you stop you stop really seeing how fortunate you are to have another human being um, give their life or spend their time with you. And that's what I think a lot of people in relationship do is we forget how fortunate we are to have another human being that will get up, spend time with us, encourage us. And like she even said this the other day, she goes, you always bring me coffee in the morning. She goes, sometimes I just forget how grateful I am to have you, of all people, bringing me coffee. And it's like, oh, he always brings me coffee. So It seems so small, but it's so big. It's small, but there's know? so many things. It, it means yeah. so, you know, so much. And so anyway, we, we dove in this week and we, there was, there's this person that we had kind of listened to a bit who's creating some pretty successful uh, business coaching, she and her husband, and in selling these products on relationships and how to take your life up. Well, just this past week announced that like they two were, weeks two weeks ago, that they're getting a divorce. While at the same time, they're selling all these relationship programs and leadership stuff, but things but it, at home are out. And it had been out for a while. And been out for a really long time. That's sad thing. That's what's sad. And so yeah. from the human standpoint, it's it's sad. But at the same time, if we're gonna help people with relationships is what I we do together. But in coaching people, I gotta make sure that what I'm talking about is working in my life. Right. I'm not going to talk about something that's not working. I'm not. I had a, a, a mentor that used to say, if you profess what you do not possess, you're a fraud. And it's like, wow. So I push myself hard, right, to take my life on, personal development. We do that in relationship. But this is why we jumped in and we said, we're going to really start working with people a lot in relationship. We're going to have to get really uncomfortable and make sure that we're coming from a very authentic, vulnerable, transparent, real place. Yeah. And we took it on and it was it's anyway it's been great so it, it, it was it was i mean two, two straight full like full, full days like he would have to work a little bit but then as soon as he was done i'm right back with him and we're right back together and we're we are digging in and we've always had conversations like this when something comes up but it's never been about something that's kind of been like uh i guess from the past but kind of stuck around but needed to be talked about anyway but we usually will have these conversations right away as soon as something comes up and we're really good at it. Like we're really good at just talking and talking until we get to where we feel like we're healthier, we're coming from a healthier place. Not necessarily that we're in, like we agree with each other on whatever, but we come from a place of like, all right, we're moving forward now. I see this as your perspective, this is mine. 
let's move forward. So we're really good at having these conversations. Mm -hmm. We've always, we always have. And, but this week, what was so different was it, it just came from a much more like vulnerable, weird place, you know? And I, you know, I felt like I was just raw, like inside out and just like, I don't know. It was so, so hard, but it's been an amazing outcome. And we are 100% passionate about creating that for ourselves and helping other people to do the same. And it just, I mean, it, it was awful, but it's been wonderful. <laughs> so, um, but Gail, Gail, Gail I, Hurden just said, what kind of rules do you have in communication? Well, she said a minute ago, something about coming from a safe place, like us being able to do this, um, out of safety. And that is, that's very true. Like we've created a safe space yeah. for each other to, and we can, we can go into this a little bit more, but like we've created a safe space for us to say what needs to be said with no judgments, no, um, what's another word? Um, no judgments and no like assumptions. Assum yeah. No judgments, no assumptions, no rules. but just being, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's our thing. No, jud no judgments, no assumptions, no rules. That's where we are. And we can explain what that might mean. Hi, Kennedy. So, um, hey, hey, so Tina. Um, we, yeah, so, so that's do you where, want me to kind of touch on that for a second? I mean, just the, to answer that. The judgments, assumptions, yeah. and rules, so that we can be clear on what that means to so us. Rules yeah. for us in communication are we are, well, communication is a byproduct of agreements and, and a context of value set that you have. So, some people communicate really well because of a value set that they stand for. You can talk and not communicate. Some people are like, well, communication is so important in a relationship. But it's like, yeah, you can talk. But if you're not talking from a place of honesty, authenticity, vulnerability, mm -hmm. um, then you're, commun you're talking, but you're not really saying anything. There's not a real connection there. And so for us, the context of our relationship, the first one, Gail, is, is honor. Like, if I'm going to speak to her, if I'm going to speak to um, our children, uh, if I speak to my friends, people that I coach, there's times when I'm coaching people that I get, I get frustrated with them. And I'll say, look, this, I'm frustrated with you on this, but I'll always speak from a place of honor. And that's the number one rule. That, and honor comes from this idea that she doesn't have to be in my life and I don't have to be in hers. Like, look at her. We're choosing She's, to sit here beside one another. We're choosing this deal. And yeah. so I honor that part. So she could go and do what she wants to do with her life I could go do what I wanted to do with my life. And we wouldn't have to be together. We have kids, and, but people do that. And so the, we decided that we were going to just honor one another and honor the fact that we're going to be on a path and a journey together. And I honor the fact that she's a human being, that she doesn't belong to me. And I don't belong to her. The, the, we, we don't own each other. We are not each other's possessions. Like I can say, that's my wife. But saying that that's my wife is that this is the person who I am in relationship with and we have a family and it's on paper and all of that. But I by no means necessary own her. I don't get to manipulate or control and I, you know, I don't get to determine what she does. What I do is create space out of the honor component to where she grows into the person that she wants to become. And so the communication standpoint is an offshoot, a byproduct of that value. And so in that value set, if I stand in that, then that's where all good communication grows from. And so we, we don't do that. We, when we fight, we, we, if we have a disagreement, we fight very fair. And there's no name calling. There is no putting each other down. We're not condescending. We don't, um, we don't bring up the past, anything that may have happened a month ago or six months ago or a year ago. We don't bring, well, you did this last time. It's, it's, that's, we don't do that. We're, we stay very present in, in, in the disagreement with whatever is at hand versus pulling all this stuff because there's all these emotional anchors and hooks to things that have gone on in the past. And if I'm bringing up something that she did wrong six weeks ago, what, she, what can she do about that? She can't do anything about that. It's six weeks ago. It's over. And so there's nothing she can do about it. So it's like, let's just give each other the grace of respect of being present with the argument or the disagreement. And so we do that. There's no name calling. Uh, we don't ridicule. We don't make fun of each other. We play with each other. We never make fun of each other. I would never say anything that's even a joke that could be taken, that she could take and be like, oh, that hurt my heart. Because the old Chinese proverb says this, there's much truth told in joke. Mm -hmm. 
And people make jokes and sarcasm, like I despise sarcasm. I think people are sarcastic because they don't have the courage to say what needs to be said in the moment. So they'll passive aggressively make some side comment. And so we don't do that. Um, we're, we, you know, and if we notice that in a moment, if she were to say something that really hurt me, I felt like it was an attack, um, I, would, I would say something about that. I would respond to that in the moment. And knowing how we are, she would apologize. Like we're, you know, we both are willing to do yeah. that. We're more committed to the relationship, I think, than we are the need to, to win the argument or to be right in the argument. What we're trying to do is to move the relationship forward mm -hmm. in any disagreement. Uh, otherwise, all you're doing is you're leaving the argument or the, the talk or the dialogue that you're having basically just pounding your chest, feeling like I'm, it's all about me, I'm right, I got my point across, and so that's it, and so take it or leave it. And we don't do that, we, we really go into it. If there's gonna be a disagreement or a conversation, it's about solution, and we're very honest with each other. If we feel clear, if we feel like we're complete in an argument, are we d good, are we done? The thing that was difficult this week for us, well for me, um, we had these conversations, and then the memory of the conversation come Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Like, we talked about this over the weekend. I just want a little more clarity on it. You know, what did you mean by this? How, how does that really look? And we sat, and it was, it was very difficult. There was a, I and mean, I don't think she would mind me saying this, but there was a time where I was going to leave and go, where was I going? The gym? I don't or somewhere? know if you were just going to Yeah, I was going to leave. Drive I was going to get in the car and, and go somewhere to the gym wherever and she she didn't want me to leave and she just I was said like, no don't leave so I can't you, you can't you can't leave me here we have to talk like I can't be okay if you're just gonna like cuz I, I was afraid it was gonna be like a shutdown or just a I, I don't want to talk about this and we're, we're not gonna work through this or whatever I was having all these thoughts like oh my gosh why is he wanting to leave uh, you know just worst case scenario kind of thing so yeah. I was like please please don't go we have to talk we can't, we can't, you know, and we always do talk and like, you know, we would have talked eventually, but in that, that moment I was like, don't go, please don't go anywhere. Yeah. And, and that goes, <laughs> and, and when, when she said that to me, I'm like, oh, okay, then there's no way I'm leaving. And so I, I sit in the office with her. She sits beside me and we have our studio that we do our podcast and recording. She sits in the chair next to me. She cries, she talks, I talk, I cry. We, you know, and we, we cleaned out some of what had started to build up. And I think for things to heal, this is, this is the truth, things don't just heal with time. I think you have to almost kind of scrape out the wound and, and then put an, some sort of an ointment over it to begin to let it heal. And, and the, the digging out is, it and, the digging out is yeah. really uncomfortable. But the ointment, the healing ointment, so to speak, is, is forgiveness, understanding, um, it's, it's, grace. it's grace, and it's, it's, if you can say, hey, look, no matter what you say to me, I'm not going to judge it. it. It may sting like, you know, That's hell. where I the, mean, it, the no judgments come from in our, in our part of our thing, is no, the no judgments, the no assumptions, the no rules. So this is the no judgments. You can say what you need to say. And I'm not going to judge it. Yeah. I'm not going to try to defend myself. I'm not going to try to tell you why that's wrong. I'm just going to listen. I'm not going to judge it. And then we're going to move forward from there and see how we can bring something out of that to a more healthier, forward-moving relationship. Yeah. So we. So just so you guys know, and then we're going to give you these the things that cause a relationship to fail. But we call it the jar. J A R. That's our. <laughs> that's our thing. And this came organically. This wasn't something from another. That conversation this came from another hard conversation oh, yeah we've yeah. done a difficult conversation and so we we call it the jar which is we say no judgments uh, no assumptions and no uh, rules now some people hear that I mean like you don't have any rules in the in the, the marriage there are in a sense understandings of things that just we wouldn't allow that's mm -hmm. just not gonna happen but as far as rules it's like we want each other I want her to do what she needs to do to feel fulfilled and to feel like she has permission to step into her life and do what is uniquely hers. Um, I, so I don't set up some rule that you have to follow this or else I'm not happy. 
And that's a problem because many people are like, there's just so many rules and there's so many expectations. And one of the things I think happens is one of the reasons relationships fail is there's so many expectations, but there's no agreements. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have agreements, but it's not like rules, like you can't do this, but the agreements are, hey, we said this is gonna kind of work for us and we'll just stay in that place. And if that needs to change, it can change. But we're like, we're, somebody, Erica put the jar of gin and money. Oh, yeah, that's hey, it. yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, anyway, so the, the biggest part of think why relationships fail is there's so many judgments. Like you judge people based on what your preferences are and what you think somebody is supposed to be like or do. And you get married and it's like, do you promise to live with this person till death do you part? You know, it's sickness and in health. And there's this, and those are a few little things, but those just sound good at the ceremony. But like, you know, we put all these judgments on people thinking they have to meet our preferences. And if you don't read the right kind of books and you don't talk a certain way and you're not into this kind of sports and, and intimacy is not at the frequency that I want it to be and you don't talk to me about things when they come up and you, we put all these, our own preferences of what we think is right, we put that on people and we assume and then we don't come up with an agreement of saying, hey, I can count on this from you because you can count on this from me. In, in laying it on the table without judging one another for what the request is. And so if she has a request of me, I, I don't judge it. I'm like, okay, that's what you need, then wonderful. And then if I have a request of her, then she hears it and she doesn't judge it. She doesn't go, oh, I can't believe that you would want that or that matters to you. And this is, these are the, I think the foundational, most real kind of approaches to a relationship that will keep the relationship together. Because mm -hmm. so many just don't stay together. And so I think we said this would be a personal relationship kind of conversation, but um, that's, that's big for us. And so um, it, we encourage one another uh, a lot. We, we you know, hold each other accountable a lot. Um, we don't have to hold each other accountable as much because we're both pretty disciplined in our approaches to our life. And um, the accountability part is more of a, a supplement versus a, uh, a fundamental kind of thing. It's supplemental versus fundamental. Um, so accountability, if she tells me she wants to get something done, then I'll go, okay, I'll support you with that, making sure you get it done. If I tell her there's something I want to get done, I tell her what it is, she supports me with making sure I get it done. Um, but we don't just sit around sitting in our chair of judgment saying, well, this is what I prefer and you'd better act that way or else. There's freedom in it. And I think freedom gives you the chance to, to um, find out what you're about versus doing things because somebody else wants you to do it. There's an old saying that, that if you convince a person against their will, they're of the same opinion still. And so if I just always convince her what she needs to do because that's my deal, um, then she may do it, but she may not have ever felt like she had the freedom to look in her own heart and go, okay, but what do I really want to do? And so these conversations are, these are the, the toughest part of, I think, a real relationship. And uh, anyway, so th there you go. Um, you know, that, yeah, Paul, Paul said you live the Bible, your work, you know, absolutely true. And uh, Paul, one of the things that, that is so valuable in that is that the, the, the agreement part is that we're going to live these parts of the Bible because there's so many other things, even religiously. I think religion wrecks people when it comes to relationships. I think religious dogma, religious biases, cultural dogma, cultural biases, what's taboo, what you can't do, what you can't talk about. And so many things wind up being suppressed in people that it, it winds up coming out in frustration, it winds up coming out in resentments, it winds up coming out in, in bitterness towards the people that I think we're called to, to love and nurture and help grow. And so um, I, I love the having an anchor, so to speak, a guiding light better, um, using the Bible and scripture. Um, but I think that it's also a, a willingness to be honest about how it applies to us personally and be willing to make adjustments along the way versus saying, no, this is how it better be or else. That's a controlling kind of approach. In that context, I think it stifles relationship. I think it stifles communication, passion, and joy, and you know, renewing your mind and your heart uh, is, is key. Yeah. You got, anyway, you're kind of babysitting. I know, it's all good. Um, I, uh, 
Um, I, I was just thinking a few minutes ago about the, the, we are talking about this because this is a standard that we set between the two of us together as a couple. Like this, this is our standard. This is the standard that we're gonna live by. And we're choosing that every day. So whether it's hard, whether it sucks, or if, whether or not we have to talk for three days straight to work something through, this is the standard that we've set for ourselves. Yeah. And I think that's, that's just like, I don't, I don't know, like putting whatever standard out to, and coming to an agreement on what that standard yeah. is, is very important. All right. So, you know, yeah. So now we'll give you a few things. These are things that I've, I've found that cause relationships to fail. All right. First things first. Um, uh, well, let me give you this. Do you ever have a period of time where one of you just isn't showing up emotionally? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think that, um, I, I don't think so. I, I think that we've, we're pretty quick to, I think we're pretty dialed in. And I think if you take the relationship one day at a time, if I were to wake up one morning and see that she's not connected or whatever, we would talk about it. And I think because we both value that, we make sure that we're not just trying to get through the day and turn a blind eye to something that we see because it's, and that's one of the things I was gonna mention, is that you don't turn a blind eye to something that you see. Uh, blind, uh, what we always say, what you turn a blind eye to becomes a blind spot. And blind spots are where, you know, accidents happen. Mm -hmm. And so if I notice that she's disconnected, you know, there's certain things that, T certain times of the month where she feels uncomfortable. Women have these things, right? <laughs> Why I mean, are you talking about? I don't know, but like there's a couple <laughs> days like, okay, wow, yeah, that's happening. And she is a little more emotional and a little bit more. And you know, I mean, you know, do it, you kind of know to expect it. And you know, you know, that's just kind of how, how it goes sometimes. Yeah, but we <laughs> so still okay, follow the same like, kind of guideline, yeah. which is even if you're frustrated, you're not going to be rude to me, even if I'm frustrated or stressed and work and doing things. I'm not going to be rude to, to her, so that's kind of the guideline part of it. Um, but if we're if one of us is out, we know each other well enough, and I think we've both kind of fueled enough courageousness in our with each other mm -hmm. to be able to say, "Hey, I, I think you're kind of I, I think you're out." My experience is that you're out right now, and mm -hmm. is there something we need to talk about? And for years, if that kind of conversation came up, I would say things to her, and she would be like, "No, I'm fine." I'm fine, and you know yeah. we all you know what fine means: freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. That's what fine means. When somebody goes, "No, I'm fine," but she would do that, and it wasn't anything that was a big deal. But even small things being swept under the rug over time start to build up, and you wind up tripping over those things in the relationship. And that's something that we always try to avoid. So if we notice it, we don't stay out for very long. Yeah, and I I have had to work a lot over the years on just speaking my mind but truth. not what my truth, truth for you speak yeah what what my truth is not necessarily speaking my mind because that can uh, sometimes be a little detrimental if there's no thought into what you're wanting to say or what you're how you want to express your truth so it took it it has taken me and I still have to be intentional about um, when we're in conversation or when he thinks something is out with me and I'm like okay I have to I have to think is something really out and how do I express to him what is out and being real and being authentic and just yeah. being raw and putting it, laying it all out there? I I have just always been like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll process I'll process through this myself. But that's not the healthy that's, way. Yeah, just, and that's exhausting. That's right? very exhausting. It's exhausting for everybody when you know something's out, but you just won't say it, and and you but you don't package it right. Like sometimes just because you feel something doesn't mean that's the time to say it. I think you want to package things well, and if it's something that's important. Um, it does need to be packaged well. You know, yeah. the difference between saying uh, what's bothering you and saying what's wrong with you. Like they're very, you, you, it's, some people think it's the same thing, but it's not. You know, what's bothering you is, is an open conversation. Like what's wrong with you is almost an attack. It has a little bit of a slant to it, like very condescending. I'm making you wrong for being out. And so with us, it's, it's just the openness to, to be able to say, hey, my experience is that you're out. And she's worked and gotten much better at being honest. I think I've worked at making sure I'm always creating space where she can speak to me and tell me if something's out. And I don't feel the need to fix it. I don't feel the need to change it, manipulate it, um, coerce her into being a certain way. It's more about um, just creating space where we can 
talk about the thing that needs to be talked about and create a solution around it. So, yeah. yes, um, let's go to the, I don't wanna to be too, too much today. So, a few things, uh, reasons, reasons relationships fail. That was a big, that was Sorry. a big tea. You got a lot going on over there today. Uh, yes. Um, Sorry. Uh, we're babysitting. I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> we are babysitting. We got a phone falling over. Um, but anyway, so reasons relationships fail, and we will both kind of touch on these. The first one is I, I think relationships fail, same reason business, same kind of a principle, mm -hmm. but people think that failure happens quickly. And that is absolutely not true. Failure never happens quickly. Failure happens slowly, right? Relationships are built one conversation at a time. Yeah. Relationships fall apart one conversation at a time or the neglect of not having one conversation at a time that needs to be had. And so people have this idea because I think we are so conditioned now that we can get anything that we want so quickly that we are a, hi Linda, we are very much a get it right now, we are a microwave society, we push Amazon a button Prime. and get it, Amazon Prime, and we think that we can get things fast and that everything's gonna happen fast, and so we put off things that we need to take on, and then we try to do things last minute. I heard somebody say recently, well, if it wasn't for the last minute, just think how many things went and get done, and that's very true. But as it pertains to relationship, is thinking that you know the, the you're gonna that fail. It's just gonna get better on its own. Yeah, it doesn't. Or, and, yeah, and it doesn't get better on its own. Things don't get better naturally. Not really good. Things get better intentionally. Your health doesn't get better naturally. Your health gets better intentionally. Mm -hmm. Your relationship, your marriage, all that. It's got to be intentional. And so the idea, it's a, it's a, it's a misnomer, no doubt, that um, you think failure happens, gonna happen quickly. It doesn't. It's mm -hmm. gradual. It's a slow creep. Failure is like a turtle. It slowly moves towards you, and then all of a sudden, it bites you. It's like a snapping turtle, right? They don't move very fast, but failure will come into anything gradually, and it's what you have turned a blind eye to will be the thing that will overtake you. And when it overtakes you, it's still a failure. And then some people are like, well, I don't know, I didn't see that coming. It's like, but you did. You did see it coming. You just didn't do anything about it. You didn't communicate, you didn't talk, you didn't look at yourself and say, what can I do to bring the situation to make this better? That's not what people do. And it's, it's, it's slow and, it, and it's gradual. You got anything you wanna to add to that or? Uh, no, that, that, no, that was it. I was just thinking of the, like the tortoise and the hare. It's like the, when you were saying the turtle, you know? Yeah. Like it was, it was a slow, slow, slow creep and then all of a sudden that wins, that wins the, it wins the race, but it, not in the relationship sense. It wins over the relationship, the yeah. slow, the slowly, the gradual, it wins over, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. the next thing, here's, here's the second one. Um, people, here's the reason relationships fail. People believe that avoiding conflict means success. That if, if, if there's that always, that you're just comfortable and if you're, you feel stable, if, if you feel like that things are okay and that they're good, then, then everything's all right. And that's not the case. It's not the case at all. Uh, sometimes conflict is your best friend. Um, pain is your friend. If you're avoiding pain in any area, if you're avoiding confronting the thing that you need to confront by avoiding the pain, the immediate pain, what's gonna happen is the slow creep of whatever it is that's gonna wind up overtaking you is going to happen. But most, many of the times it happens because you think that having that conversation or pissing somebody off or ruffling somebody's feathers or stepping on somebody's toes, you think that's the way to have a relationship. And so people wind up physically standing beside each other, but they're not aligned, they're not congruent, there's no depth in communication, and there, there's no transparency. And it's like, we made it through the day, we made it through the month, we made it through the year, we've been together for so long, but it um, doesn't mean anything. And it doesn't. People get divorced at every year, every number, anything you can imagine. And it's, it's because um, I think they tried to avoid conflict. People try to avoid conflict so much and they don't want pain. And it, somebody, I heard somebody once say that until you're, the pain, the acid of neglect eats through the walls of denial, you're not gonna change. And it, sometimes it just gets so bad that you, you go, God, I gotta do something now. And if you think you're gonna avoid conflict in any area and succeed, uh, you're not. 
the hardest conversations to have are sometimes the most important conversations to have. And if you are in a relationship where you don't feel like you can have the hard conversation and be like, this is what's true, this is what's going on for me, then you really need to talk about that first and foremost. And this is why I don't talk. I don't talk to you because every time I feel like I speak, then here's my experience. I feel like you turn it around, that you try to control me, that you judge me, you try to shame me um, into doing or, or whatever. And so that's a very manipulative thing and avoiding conflict in any any relationship is it's it winds up being very manipulative you use your comfort to manipulate another person um, you can use emotion of any kind to manipulate another person and so um, you know conflict is is good um, I did a talk this past week and I said the benefits of pain and that one of the pain things that pain can do for you is that it can al align you again with your purpose like when you feel some pain you go okay why am I doing this anyway like if we feel pain in the relationship, like we have a conversation and it sucks and it stings, then I can go, why are we doing this marriage anyway? What is this relationship really about? And it can remind you of the why and the bigger picture. But if you don't feel any pain and you're just kind of floating along, you can forget that there is a bigger picture that you're trying to work towards. And now the bigger picture just becomes to get through the day versus to grow through the day, to make the relationship stronger or better. And so pain aligns you with a purpose. Um, the, the, the other thing is, is pain can, can help you to make adjustments. The moment you feel pain, you can then make an adjustment to move forward into something else. If you don't feel pain, you may not know anything is wrong and you don't address it so you don't make any adjustments. You know, uh, pain, third thing I said, P-A-I-N, the, the I in pain was that it can inspire you. The moment I feel pain, I go, man, I don't want to feel this again, so what, what do I need to do right now? And what, what could be different right now? And when you go, you know what, I'm going to use this pain to inspire me to get my ass up, sorry, to get my rear end up out of the chair and do something. I'm not going back to the doctor and the doctor telling me, yeah, you, you got to get this under control. You're going to die. I'm, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to use this pain and that suck, the thing that sucks to inspire me to do something different in the day to day. And I can use that pain as the anchor to push me or cause me to dig in. And then the, the end of pain was, was, was pretty easy. Pain can show you what you need to say no to, which means setting up boundaries. And so you say, we don't do this. This is a no. I don't want this in my life. I don't because it causes me too much pain. Mm -hmm. Negativity causes me pain. If I'm around negativity, it throws me off my focus. Next thing you know, I'm not getting the things done that I need to get done. And so pain can do all that for you. So in, instead of avoiding pain and just pretending like everything's all right, then what you do is you say, I'm gonna use this pain, it's a gift, and what am I gonna do with it? And if you're okay with doing that, things can get better, things can get richer, and then it's like you're just fashioning a foundation through pain that you can then jump off of into your next level. But if you don't have anything sturdy to jump from to try to get to the next level, it, it's, it's, you jump, it'd be like standing on a float in a pool trying to jump away from it. The float, float, you know, it shoots out from under you, you're not gonna be able to jump very far. And if you don't fashion a relationship where there's a strong foundation, um, you're not gonna be able to jump very high, you're not gonna go into the next level. And so many people love this idea of talking about the next level. It's like, oh, it's so nice to talk about what's next. It's, we're gonna do this next. And I'm like, when I'm coaching people, I'm like, you're not gonna do this next. All you're gonna do is you're gonna check one more day off your calendar, you're gonna get a little bit older, but you're not gonna take on this thing that you know that you need to take on. You're just not, so let's just call it what it is. And years ago, there was a couple that called me, oh my gosh, this great couple, they called me and said, we want you to coach us. And I said, I'm not coaching you. And they said, why not? I said, because you're not taking yourself on, even with your physical health right now, and so what am I gonna say to you that's gonna overpower the thing that is most important, which is your relationship with you. What am I gonna tell you? Am I just gonna, in your mind, give you a whole lot of neat catchphrases? Am I gonna give you some scripture that you can go, oh, here's some scripture that gives me permission to just wait on God and not do anything today? Like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm not gonna coach you. I said, here's what you're gonna do. If you do this, you can call me back. I said, you're gonna join a group fitness training class of some kind where there's a little bit of accountability. Then you can call me back. And they called me back that evening, like, I don't know, four or five hours later, and they had joined CrossFit. So they went from not working out at all to joining CrossFit, CrossFit. to CrossFit. <laughs> and, and she she just ran a 5K this past weekend, two weekends ago, first one she'd ever done. 
but combined, I think they've lost over 100, 120 pounds. Didn't you say she had did, she did it without stopping or something? Yeah, five k without but, stopping, and but it, I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah. But it's like you have to be willing to say the things that I can be honest about. I'm going to be honest about them and call myself on my own garbage instead of hoping that she's going to pacify my compliance and complacency to just being casual in my life. So I don't, I don't hold myself to anything. And then I feel like crap. And then I'm needy going, please tell me I'm the man. Make me feel good. Please make me feel good. Because I feel so bad. I'm not taking myself on. You got to take you on. And one of the ways you take you on is to look at the things and you go, this is my day. This is what I know I need to do better. This is how I can tighten up here. Just a little at a time. And man, a little bit adds up. It a little bit can build you something that you're proud of. My dad built homes and, and I've, I've talked about it a lot. He bricked houses and my dad bricked a whole house one brick at a time. And it was an art and it was one brick, one brick, one brick, a day, two days, a week, two weeks. And then you look up and there's this home and you're like, man, that's really pretty. That looks awesome. It didn't happen overnight. It was one brick at a time. And so when you're willing to confront the thing that you, you could take on and feel the pain and then be in it with one another and go, this is what we want to do, little baby steps even. You can do a big, huge change. You want to cut something out of your life and go, hey, we're never doing that again. That's a big sweeping change. But most improvement is going to happen gradually the same way that most failure happens gradually. So um, that's, that's a, you got anything well, on I, that? I, or, yeah. I, I, I'm um, going to have some coffee. I was just, have your coffee, Ben. Um, I uh, was just thinking, um, like you, you had talked about the physical part of it. So because I love exercise, it's just kind of a part of my being. Um, I can equate so much of like mindset and forward movement progress to that. Like so, I think it's it's sad to me sometimes when I see people who are willing to take on like they'll go to the gym and they'll work out and they'll hire, hire a trainer and they'll do whatever. But they because and they'll do that hard thing like that. That's hard. Like it's hard to look at yourself in the mirror and go, okay, I need to change and I need to do something to move my life forward in a health sense. But then they don't do that for their mind or their heart or their relationships. Yeah. I'm like, there's still so much out, and it's it, it's the, like you have to set a standard for yourself and go, I am not going to live from a place of inauthenticity. I have to set that standard, and, and nobody's going to do it for us. Like we're telling you all this because this is very real and vulnerable. Because this this was this week, and this is what we live for is to be better together. But like deciding that you want to be in that standard all the time and get uncomfortable and have the uncomfortable conversations, like you have to make that decision yeah. first and foremost that that is the standard that we're setting for ourselves in relationship, whether it's me and him or me with our girls, whoever it is, like you have to set a standard first yeah. and, be, and be okay with being uncomfortable because it's, it's not always gonna be comfortable. And then yeah. another thing like I was thinking, just a few minutes ago and I write things down so that I don't forget. But um, we had mentioned this the other day in conversation, but just because there's no drama in a relationship or at home doesn't mean that it's actually really healthy. Right. Like you can have an unhealthy relationship and it not be drama. You can kind of just be going about your day and not creating any kind of drama or having any kind of drama come in, but you're also not having intentional conversation with one another. Yeah, there's no drama in a nursing home. Right, there is drama in a hospital sometimes. You go in the yeah. ER, it's like, wow, there's a lot happening right now. There's nothing wrong with, with the drama or the conflict or a fight. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's okay. Mm -hmm. we, we don't do that a lot, we don't yell, we, none of that in front of the kids or anything like that. But like, it's okay to have some conflict and feel some, some discomfort. Um, and, and from that though, what you're saying, there's two things I would elaborate on. The, you, the context for your life is important. It's more important even than the content of your life. So context really creates the space for the content to grow and get healthier and better. And so I think one of the questions you always want to ask yourself is like, what's my context? What's the context for my day? What's the context for our conversations? Are they really honest? Is it really vulnerable? Is it really authentic? Do, and and that, that, is that a context? Yes. And standing in it and then allowing the layers of it to be peeled back and peeled back and peeled back. You have something to stand in. And if you're just always trying to avoid conflict or avoid pain, 
like you're not standing much for a context, not a real context. The context could be casualness, uh, complacency, um, but not real true commitment, not real true uh, progress or improvement or growth. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a relationship must evolve. And I think the way that you evolve a relationship and let it grow is to set a context for things that are gonna fuel growth. Like you can just be comfortable, it doesn't mean that you're growing. And so she talks about somebody going to the gym, somebody getting a trainer. You can make a decision. Um, we used to have a, a kind of a joke, it was funny. And, and I learned it from my mentor years ago. But he would say, okay, if you have five birds sitting on a wire and two decide to fly away, how many do you have left? And people would go, five minus two, you have three. And he'd say, no, you still have five. Just because you decide something doesn't mean that it's happening. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to get a trainer. I decided to have a conversation with my spouse. Well, what kind of conversation did you decide to have? And how does that look? Can I see what you're doing? Like if I were to come follow you around, could I see the adjustments you're making to your relationship and to your life? Or are you just talking about it? Or are you just talking about what you're gonna to decide to do? Like I, de I decided that I was gonna start eating right. Well, are you eating right? Uh, did I decided that I was gonna start showing up on time. I decided that I was gonna be a better team player, a better employee. You decided that, but what are you doing? You have to decide and then you have to develop some discipline that will then lead you to some desired outcome that you want. And you have to know what those are, but you also have to stand for some discipline. And discipline means that you do what you can do in the moment, even if you don't feel like it. And I don't care what somebody decides. You know, people call me and go, I want you to coach me because I've decided I gotta get better. And I go, well, that's great. This is the first part. You can give me your credit card. That's a step, great. But what are we gonna do after the first phone call? When I tell you we're gonna hang up this call, what you gonna go do in the next hour? What list are you gonna write out of things to check off that you're gonna hold yourself accountable to? Like, what can I count on you to do? Are you just running your mouth? Like, are you just saying stuff just because it makes you feel good? Like, you can be more committed to just talking than you are actually committed to doing. And so we don't wanna just decide, we wanna do. And so we wanna do the thing of making our relationship healthier. And so um, there's that. Um, any last couple things on that? No. Um, I, a couple more things and we can be done. We're in an hour. Um, one of the reasons relationships fail is there's no passion, no excitement. It's as predictable, it's hard to have passion when everything is predictable. Like you know what your day is gonna be like, that's wonderful, there's structure, yes of course, but if there's no spontaneity, like if you're not spontaneous, you're not doing anything that's fun, you're not going to a new place, new restaurant, you're not going out and finding and having new experiences, walking, hiking new trails, like we talked about this, um, going to new places in town, doing new forms of art, like painting, um, anything, singing, writing, doing any, if everything for you is so predictable, passion is probably going to, it's gonna diminish in your life. And I don't, and I read a quote that said, I just, I don't want someone as a filler in my life. And some people are okay with fillers. It's like, it's like, there's a quote that says, I'd rather have the seat empty than to fill it with someone that I have to compromise with. And so that's, you know, when, when you're predictable, it's like, it's, it's predictable, it's like it's mediocre, it's fine. You have to be spontaneous. You gotta be willing to go, you know what, today we're gonna go do this. We're gonna do a, a staycation spontaneously. Why? Just because oh, I'm gonna bring your bag downstairs and you got, I got your bag packed. We're gonna go over and stay at the hotel. I got the babysitter coming. For us with kids, because some people are like, well, kids, it's so hard. It's as hard as you wanna make it. Everything in your life is as difficult as you want to make it based on the focus and the perspective you put on it. So the moment you start being spontaneous, you start going, well, man, that wasn't as hard as I thought. You know, it just wasn't. We could do that again. We could go try a new restaurant. We could go sit and in the middle of the day, we could do a day date. We could, we could get out in the middle of the day and go do something fun. We could go do something that we have never done before. Um, we're not ballroom dancers, but you know what? We could go take a ballroom dancing class. We're not, we're not artists or painters, but we could go do a, a canvas painting date night thing. That, that There's so much that you can do. And if, if your life is so predictable, you are not going to live with passion. And if there's no passion and there's no excitement, motivation leaves, the fire between you and the people you're closest to, it's gonna diminish and then it's gonna be easy, listen to me, without passion and the passion being high, what happens is your internal dialogue, that voice gets higher and higher. Passion overpowers negativity, always. I can sit around and be negative and go, you know what? 
Uh, I just don't know if my life is working. But if I find something to go, you know what, I am passionate about that, it stirs up something in me that overpowers the very critical, critical negativity that can be happening um, in, in my life and in my mind. And if I let negativity go here and stay here and I don't keep stirring it up, I'm going to project that onto her. And the next thing you know, there's a lot of negativity between us and good stuff's not happening. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, kind of going back to the, the spontaneous kind of thing is um, it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't even have to be very elaborate at all. Just, I think what's most important is being very intentional and in seeking out ways that you can be spontaneous. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to show up at your workplace and we're gonna have lunch together today when you don't normally do that like it doesn't have to be anything big or elaborate but you have to seek it out and if you're not looking for it you're not gonna find it you're not gonna find the ways so you have to constantly remind yourself look for ways to be spontaneous look for ways to do something different than you did yesterday yeah. look for ways to encourage each other different than you did yesterday yeah. like his like it's, it's the cliche thing like the love language thing but he he likes to talk and <laughs> Obviously, I'm just kidding. But like, I'm an introvert. No, <laughs> I'm very guarded but and very. He, sh I'm very shy. He he likes to talk. He likes for me to talk to him. He likes to talk with other people. It's it's his way that he loves people, and it's his way to feel loved. So I, the more quiet one, I have to find ways to talk sometimes. And I'm just being honest. Like I have to think. Okay, I need to spend time talking with my husband because he appreciates that. He feels loved, he feels honored and respected when I spend time talking. Yeah. Mine could be more of like just quality time, like being with me, being beside me, holding my hand, that kind of thing, but mm, thank you. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, it's, it's an intentionality of seeking ways to honor your partner. Yeah, and what they want. So yeah. what if you took the time that you're spending on Facebook scrolling through, if it's five minutes a day, let's just say it's five minutes, which it ain't five minutes. For most people, it ain't five minutes. It's more like 55 minutes or five hours and 50 minutes. What if you took the time you're putting on, on Facebook and doing meaningless things? What if you took those few minutes and said, these are few minutes that I am going to invest into doing something new or unique or planning something different for my marriage? And so now... It could, I'm sorry, it, I was just thinking it could be like a book or a podcast, even not even necessarily a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, but like it could be a, some something that you yeah. are investing into your relationship by either reading something or listening to something or the doing of yes. something. And if you listen or, like if you watch this and you are watching this obviously, but if you were to listen to a podcast and you get some great insight and you're like, man, that's really cool. Okay, your commitment can't just be to feel good. That's a big part of it. You've got to feel good mm -hmm. to help the other person in the, the relationship to feel good. We're infusing good energy into one another. But if you you get new information, but if you don't assimilate it, then then it's like, what's the point, right? And, and some people are like, Ronnie, I'd love to read. I'm such a big reader. It's like, okay, well, you just told me you read two hours yesterday. Yes, yeah, I read two hours. Tell me three things that you got out of reading two hours. If you can't tell me that, then reading is really no good. You, you've got to take it and anchor it to something that you're gonna do. And so if I watch this right now, if I'm gonna listen to a podcast, I'm gonna write out something. You know what, here's an idea I had, we're gonna do this. What's an action step that that looks like from what I heard? Because if you're taking action on it, then you're improving. Otherwise, you ain't really improving. You're just wasting your time. The unrewarded, there's an old saying, unrewarded genius is a proverb. There's so many people that are so smart and know how to have, a, a, they got a great education, they know how to, how to, how to, and that's wonderful, but it's not the how to stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the doing part of it. And so if I listen to something and go, you know what, uh, that, that guy said that or that lady said that and that's so good, here's what I'm gonna do. I can be very spontaneous with taking an action step and then once I see myself doing it, I'm like, oh crap, this wasn't that hard. Look what we just did. And now you, you've created a, a little bit of a different day versus I get up, I go to work, I come home, I'm tired, I do whatever, and, and my life is just, this is, and I'm living for the weekends. And that's, don't get me wrong, whatever, but it's not gonna be a, a relationship that, that you feel really great about. So, um, and, and you talk about something like, I do like to talk, I, I, we, we talk a lot. I mean, I do like to talk. As a profession, it's what I do. But I'm always, I'm always getting my mind sharp to talk. I don't just talk. I don't start out nothing. I don't, I, I just, I don't. I'm talking about things that are new and are inspiring to me. Yeah. I don't just talk for the sake of talking. Some people yeah. are really good at going, 
I think somebody needs to hear this and they're saying something from 50 years ago and it's like, hey, just so you know, your insight, it's kind of like a dinosaur. You're saying the same stuff that you used to be, that everybody else has said that hasn't really worked. So let's go find some new science, some new perspective, some new insight and assimilate it and see if we can produce a new result. Because if we keep doing the same thing, what do we get? The same result. That's insanity. And people are, in a sense, in insane. And you keep doing the same thing and you want more passion. I want to be more motivated. I want more intimacy, more connection. But you're doing the exact same thing. You're going to the same restaurants. You're doing the same schedule throughout the day. You work out the same. You talk the same. You're reading the same thing, watching the same TV show. Nothing wrong with that. Except you can't expect a whole lot of things to change if you're not changing some things. And so it's really easy to rearrange the furniture in the house versus getting new furniture. It's really easy to just keep doing the same thing and kidding yourself and saying, well, yeah, I'm doing it now. Maybe not the case. And so I read a quote and we can be done. Um, it says, when you taste someone's mind, you'll never forget the flavor. And for us, it's like, we, I, I wanna know her mind. I wanna know how she's thinking. I wanna know what, what is important to her for the day. And we communicate that because when you, you taste somebody's mind, you don't forget it. I wanna know what's really going on for her. I, I'm not just gonna look at her and assume that things are good. I'm not, I'm actually gonna do some digging, I'm gonna do some work, and, and, and we're gonna move, move what it is that we're doing forward. And, so, and that's the work of making sure your relationship doesn't drift in a lot of different directions and then look up one day and be like, oh yeah, we've been talking about having a good relationship for so long, but our relationship's garbage and it's not working and you know we're professing what we don't possess and we talked about that earlier so yeah it just can I have that water and we'll be done no, no you can't have any water thank you um <laughs> it's uh I I I I'm speaking from a place of I and that's where we feel like we help people to come from is a place of taking responsibility for the experience that you're creating together so I have to make sure that I am not turning a blind eye to to something that could be going on either between us or with him or in our home, something that might be out, and then being okay with getting really uncomfortable and facing it head on, like holding the mirror, like we did this week, is like we held this mirror in front of us and it was it was like the worst feeling ever, but now we have a way stronger link in the chain to our relationship where we're wanting to go with it and how we want our girls to see our relationship they're watching they are watching and they're picking up on things and we want to keep building the chain even stronger and stronger and so that's gonna take a whole lot of crappy awful sucky work you know like it, it's it's so uncomfortable you yeah. know having to look at yourself and go this is out and you know and that's just something that people are not willing to do not just in relationship but just with themselves in general you know yeah, well, so, so let me that. ask you this then mm -hmm. so we talk about this being a really I kind of I could tell her it's kind of like a hell week you know I, I said it kind of feels like a hell week mm -hmm. um, but you guys probably know you walk through something really difficult on the other side it's like oh wow this is the greatest thing that could have happened for us or for for me to, to have the uh, revelation or the awareness of something what was your biggest takeaway from the week um, mine I feel like is that I can I can I can speak even even if it's something that I might be you know like embarrassed of or ashamed of or anything that would come up for me that would cause me to not open my mouth about it I can say those things to you without without feeling any judgment like even if I am embarrassed and you don't think that it would be embarrassing or it shouldn't be embarrassing, like I, I have that emotion myself. So that's stirred up already, whether, whatever that feeling is, whatever that emotion may be, that's causing me to not open my mouth and speak my truth. I feel like I am in a much healthier space of being able to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you do it so, and you see that you're that, not being judged or you're yeah, not whatever. So then like what you were saying earlier is that oh, we just had that conversation and it was awful, it was hard, so we can do it again if we need to. And we know where it's gonna get us. It's gonna get us to a place of, of higher respect for one another and for our relationship, and we're always taking into consideration, this is another thing that I love that you've always said too, is there are three, three people involved in a relationship. Me, you, and then the marriage. So we're always sitting at the table with one another, but with our marriage in consideration also. And so, you know, just taking this past week, like what 
what went on and I'm like, I'm not, I, I didn't want to talk about these things and I didn't realize that something needed to be healed at all. I didn't realize it. You said it. He said it out loud and he said something about um, healing or whatever and I was like, that I just, that was a, an aha moment and I just lost it and I was like, I didn't realize this needed to be healed. But here we are and we're making intentional forward moving steps to heal it, yeah. whatever it is. And so we're stronger for it. Yeah. And I was just like, as bad as this has been, I'm grateful for where we are on the other side of it. So yeah. we can do it again when we need to. Yeah. So you know? I guess our encouragement um, is a positive challenge for you. Uh, if, if there's something that watching this, if something came up for you that you feel, uh, something you say, hey, I, I really believe this needs to be talked about. I really believe that this needs to be um, at least looked at. And you want to look at it for yourself. You don't want to give yourself too much time. You do want to assess, is this, is this really something that is, is holding us back in relationship? I think the key would be that if you're willing to talk about it, that's the only way that you know. If you don't talk about it, you're like, I wonder if this is holding us back. Well, if you can't talk about it, then it's holding you back. Yeah. And so being willing to say, this could be holding us back. Let's at least touch on this. I'm not gonna judge. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be upset at myself. I'm, I'm just gonna see. I think that's how moving forward, uh, things will get better. And so um, with all that being said, we're an hour uh, in, um, hour and 10 minutes in, okay, okay, and it's always is. good <laughs> as, as always to, to hang with you guys and spend some time. Thanks for the comments today. If you guys got anything out of this, please share it and um, you know, let some people know. I think people really right now are struggling. They really are in relationship because there's so much uncertainty happening. I think people feel like they've been quarantined, they've been in the house, they're, they're seeing things in a spouse, seeing in a significant other, they've spent more time with them. There's things maybe under the surface that they're, you know, the pressure of being around all the time, the stresses are, are digging at some of those things and or things like are kind of rising up. Loss of a job or something that could cause. Oh, so much so pressure much with happening. the kids, like you got kids, you gotta be at home, they're with yeah. you all the time and your, your, your spouse all the time, you're trying to make ends meet and make it work. There's a lot going on and so, I request you just that you share this. If you got anything out of it today, just share it. That that because you don't know. Somebody watch it and go. You know what? We do need to talk about this. And yeah. and you're helping somebody else's life be better. You really are. If they want to take it, and that's the context today is take information, do something with it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. We'll have a new podcast out this week for uh, emerging together that's going on. Um, and if you guys video programs, all that stuff. If you're interested in the stuff that we have with our coaching, RonnieDoss.com, of course. Um, and um, we just really appreciate you guys. We appreciate you being on and um, hope you have a phenomenal weekend and a great rest of the week. God bless you guys. Peace out. See you guys. So much bye love. Bye-bye. Happy Saturday.